with a reputation as being one of the best places within Disney World for some unique food selections. From African curried corn dogs to alien inspired blueberry cream cheese mousse. But with so many restaurants to choose from, you may need a helping hand in deciding where to dine when visiting Disney World's famous zoological theme park. Hi, I'm the Frugal Brit and for this video I will outline my ranking of the top 10 best restaurants at Disney's Animal Kingdom. My ranking is based on a combination of my experiences, my friends' experiences, but I've also done heavy research of online reviews to make it as objective as possible. And given the name of my channel, I do allow my ranking to be influenced quite a bit by good value, which is why you will see some quick service options pretty high up in my ranking. And I'll also be sure to emphasize the prices for all the restaurants on my list. Ranking restaurants is always tricky, so please let me know in the comments if you disagree with anything to help provide a bit of balance. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in future Disney and Orlando vacation content. At number 10 in my ranking is the colourful and approachable Pizza Safari, located on the west side of Discovery Island towards the pathway taking you over to Pandora. This comparatively large restaurant stands out with its colourful murals and vibrant mosaics depicting playful animal scenes. Unsurprisingly, this quick service restaurant is focused mainly on pizzas, but you can also pick up a shrimp flatbread and a Caesar salad. They also do a Sicilian plant-based pizza, and vegan cheese is also available on request. Pizza Fori is tailored for either young families or those looking for a simpler meal compared to some of the more exotic options within Animal Kingdom. In terms of cost, your entrees will average around $12, which includes a salad. The sides at Pizza Fori cost between $4 and $7, and the kids' meals average at $7. Those that enjoyed Pizza Fori appreciated the simplicity of its menu, its bright colours, and the better value when compared to many other options at Animal Kingdom. Many of those that didn't enjoy Pizza Fari point out that it's not in danger of becoming one of the best pizza places in Disney World. Unfortunately, the food offerings don't quite match the theming here. And also, it can get quite busy midday with it being near the front of the park and with its approachable menu. I will say, I wouldn't recommend Pizza Fari unless you have any fussy eaters in the family or if you're just desperate for some pizza, which I appreciate does happen to the best of us. Next at nine is the famous jungle-themed Rainforest Cafe table service restaurant, which you'll find just before the entrance to Animal Kingdom on the left-hand side. And there's also a back entrance, which you access from inside the park. You've likely seen a Rainforest Cafe before with it being a national chain of restaurants, one of which you can also find within Disney Springs. This restaurant serving American cuisine offers extensive rainforest theming, including a huge saltwater aquarium, waterfalls, lush paintings, and there's also a regular thunderstorm where the sound effects and animal animatronics spring to life, all adding to Rainforest Cafe's fun atmosphere. Adjacent to the restaurant is a large gift shop featuring rainforest themed merchandise. The cost for an entree range is quite significantly. The burgers will cost you $20 on average, but the more expensive entrees go up to $40. A kid's entree will cost $10 on average. Those that enjoy Rainforest Cafe appreciated its diverse yet approachable menu, the fun theming that your kids will love. There are many though that don't appreciate it. It is quite fashionable within the Disney World community to hate on Rainforest Cafe, which I have to say I'm not fully on board with. I think it does have its purpose. However, it is quite poor value and it is one of the least unique and interesting dining choices at Animal Kingdom. Uh, noise and wait times can also be a problem too, so reservations recommended. Next at number 8 is the dinosaur themed Restaurantosaurus, situated unsurprisingly in the Dinoland USA land over on the right hand side if you're walking from Discovery Island. This quick service restaurant is modelled after student paleontologists who converted it to a restaurant with multiple eclectically decorated dining rooms and an airstream trailer that you can eat in. The menu is a mix of mostly standard American fast food such as burgers, including a plant based burger, chicken sandwiches, breaded shrimp and chicken nuggets. One of the big draws for Restaurantosaurus is the self-topping bar for the burgers and the sandwiches. An entree at this restaurant will cost you $15 on average and that does include a side such as fries. Those that enjoyed this restaurant appreciated its decent sized portions, its clever theming and sense of humour. Some that did not 
couldn't quite get the theming and some, including myself, were not blown away by the quality of food at this restaurant. At number seven is Harambe Market, the exotic street food quick service option on the northeast side of the Africa land and just south of the Rafiki's Planet Watch entrance. Harambe Market's open air market style features various stalls and have their own individual windows. According to the Disney story, it serves as the center of commerce, serving food and goods to world travelers who have come to the town for respite before or after their safari adventures seeking out the animals of Africa. Within the stores, you can grab beef euro flatbreads, chicken tikka masala, ribs, sausage, and more. The entrees cost around $14, and that will typically include something like rice or a naan bread. Kids' meals will cost around $8, and an ice cream dessert costs $5. Those that love Harambe Market love its authentic African theming and its decent sized portions. Those that didn't often point to the limited seating, which is outdoor only, so not great on those super hot days. Also, I will say I was disappointed that they changed some of the best items here, such as the spice rubbed karubi ribs. And number six is the Yak and Yeti local food cafe quick service restaurant, serving Pan-Asian cuisine and situated over on the west side of the Asia land, and next to its table service counterpart. This restaurant is unofficially known as Yak and Yeti Quick Service, which is what I'll use for the rest of this video. So this restaurant's cuisine combines flavors from China, India, and Nepal, but the breakfast menu offers more familiar American fare, all of which can be enjoyed within its large and thematically detailed outdoor courtyard. The highlights for Yak and Yeti Quick Service include the American Kobe cheeseburger, the egg rolls, and the honey chicken. The dinner entrees average at around $14, the sides come in around $5, and the kids' meals cost $8. Those that enjoyed Yak and Yeti Quick Service praise its unique menu, the variety of sources, its decent value. Those that didn't often point to the lack of indoor seating and that it can get quite crowded during peak times. Headed back to Africa at number five for the sizable safari themed character buffet restaurant known as the Tusca House Restaurant, which sits on the main thoroughfare of the Harambe village section. Its appearance is of a weathered African marketplace with rooms tumbling into one another. This family focused buffet, which is available at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, is inspired by the flavors of Africa, but with a nod to standard American fare for those less adventurous eaters. The big draws at Tusker House are the spit roasted meats that are sliced in front of you. In terms of pricing, the adult and dinner buffets cost $55 and the breakfast buffets cost $42. Those that enjoyed Tusker House enjoyed its African inspired decorations, its flavorful meats and the healthier options when compared to most other buffets. Those that didn't enjoy Tusca House often refer to its underwhelming dessert options, and there are some that feel it doesn't offer the best value, especially for those that are less interested in seeing the characters. And number four is Tiffin's, the signature table service restaurant located over in Discovery Island, just before the bridge taking you over to Pandora, the world of Avatar. Tiffin's has waterfront views, indoor and outdoor seating for 252 people, and is open for both lunch and dinner. Its menu celebrates the art of traveling and features food inspired from Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Americas. And this inspiration also applies to the design and decor of Tiffin's, which is a tribute to the explorations of Imagineers and celebrates the artwork behind the design of the park. The appetizers include exotic dishes like charred octopus and spiced chickpea falafel, whilst the main courses include shrimp and grits and North African inspired tofu. So probably not the best choice for any fussy eaters. Also probably not the best choice for anyone that's on a budget. As expected given its signature restaurant status, this is the most expensive restaurant within Animal Kingdom. A main course entree will cost on average around $50 an appetizer will cost around $18, and a kid's entree will cost around $14 on average. 
Tiffin's is well regarded for its beautiful artwork, enthusiastic service, relaxing atmosphere, incredible wine menu, many saying it has the best cuisine available within Disney World. Those that didn't enjoy Tiffin's, as you'd expect, did not appreciate the ultra high cost of dining at this signature restaurant, which doesn't meet everyone's expectations. Also on a separate note, many regret taking their children to this restaurant due to its adventurous menu. Alternatively, you may want to check out Nomad Lounge, which is a separate yet connected bar lounge offering light bites. At number three is Pandora's Satuli Canteen, featuring a wide array of internationally inspired cuisine tailored for the older and more adventurous crowd and located on the far north side of Pandora near the Wind Traders gift shop. The story behind this quick service restaurant is that it used to be a mess hall for the RDA. In case you don't know, those are the baddies from the Avatar movie. But the mess hall has been repurposed with Natvi artwork and other cultural items. Satuli Canteen specializes in its customizable bowls. You'll start by choosing your protein, your base, and then your sauces, all of which are cooked in front of you and can be enjoyed within air conditioned indoor seating. Satuli also serves one of the most popular desserts in Animal Kingdom, which is its blueberry cream cheese mousse. The entrees come in at $15 and the kids meals cost around $8. Satuli Canteen is the highest reviewed restaurant in the whole of Animal Kingdom, according to Google and TripAdvisor. Those that enjoyed it appreciated its blend of healthy dishes with exotic spices at a price lower than many expected in Animal Kingdom, there's a really impressive menu for vegans and those with food allergies, which deserves a mention. The indoor seating with air conditioning is a big selling point. Also, the theming is immersive and well received by most, but I must say the mess hall hangar feel didn't quite do it for me personally. At number two is the fan favorite Flame Tree Barbecue, which is a carnivore's paradise located on the east side of Discovery Island on the left before the bridge taking you to Dinoland, USA. Oddly, there isn't any theming really when it comes to Flame Tree Barbecue, fairly modest in appearance. There's no indoor seating either, but this can be forgiven at Flame Tree due to its sprawling complex with shaded pavilions with ceiling fans, the jungle foliage and the water features. With the Expedition Everest Mountain off in the distance over the Discovery River, this is one of the most picturesque places to eat in Disney World and makes up for the lack of theming. Highlights at Flame Tree include the fall off the bone St. Louis ribs and the baked macaroni and cheese with pulled pork. The entrees come in at around $16 on average, making it one of the best value options at Animal Kingdom. However, the entrees don't come with a side like fries, that'll cost an extra $5, and the kids' meals cost $7. Those that enjoyed Flame Tree Barbecue loved its comparatively good value with its large portions, the peaceful ambience with excellent views. All my British friends loved Flame Tree Barbecue, but I know a couple of Texans from across the pond that have very high expectations with barbecue cuisine that didn't enjoy the food quite as much as I did. My number one pick for the best restaurant at Animal Kingdom is Yak and Yeti, which is the main table service version of the Yak and Yeti quick service restaurant covered at number six, based in the same area within the Asia land. Pretty hard to miss when traveling directly from Discovery Island with its big purple building near the bridge from Discovery Island. This Nepalese style restaurant serving Pan-Asian cuisine is themed as a grand home that's been converted to a boutique hotel for the rich on their way up the Himalayas and is decorated with an eclectic assortment of Southeast Asian artifacts. Some of the highlights include the firecracker shrimp, the honey chicken, the lo mein noodle dishes, and the fried wontons. The prices do vary quite a bit at Yak and Yeti, but the entrees average at around $30, with the kids' entrees costing $10. Those that enjoyed Yak and Yeti appreciated the rich flavours, large portions and fantastic presentation from its dishes and much better value than the likes of Tusker House and Tiffin's. People also love its lavish theming. Personally, I think Yak and Yeti is one of the best themed and immersive restaurants in Disney World. 
Those that didn't enjoy Yak and Yeti are few and far between, but there is a very small minority that had bad experiences with wait times. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like button if you found it useful. It really helps the channel out. And leave a comment if your favorite was on the list, but also if you disagree with anything in the ranking. Lastly, if you're interested in future Orlando vacation content, don't forget to subscribe.